I don't do the most, but I do a lot. I'ma make a toast, cause we still alive. No big, I feel like Pac. I shoot a shot. I'm coming in hot. What's up, guys? Back for episode number two. What, what? What up? Yeah, we told you guys we were going to be covering the topic, who your real friends are. Now, who are your real friends? Like, just think about that just for a second right now. Like, top three best friends. Just think of them and think, if I called them right now, would they answer if I needed them? Just just a little food for thought, just to, just to start off. Um, but, you know, before uh, anything, before we go into anything, HUD, just start us off with some prayer. Yes, sir. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this amazing day. Thank you for my best friend right here. We get to knock out this podcast and hopefully hit something that's deep for you guys and uh, we can get into it with you. So, dear Lord, please give us what we need to say, the right words, the yes, sir. everything we need to get through to anybody that needs to hear this, Lord. Mm-hmm. And uh, please open our hearts and our minds to hear what you need us to hear. Amen. Amen, man. Amen. Yeah. Well, let's get right into it, Hud. Why don't you talk a little bit about the sermon that was preached at church? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my dad this morning, he spoke on uh, Luke 11, and that's just where the disciples are gathering, and they ask Jesus, God, I want to pray like you can pray. Mm -hmm. Like, how are you so close with God? I want to be like that. You know, he's perfect, man. Yeah, and uh, that's when Jesus gives us the the daily prayer, Father, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come, give us this day our daily bread, forgive our sins, for as we forgive those who sins against us, yeah. and lead us not into temptation. Yeah, you know, the, I mean, the the prayer, uh, the Lord's Prayer, you know, everyone learns it at church camp and stuff, and some people haven't learned that, you know, and that's not a bad thing, you know, like, yeah. some people didn't go to church camp, bro, just because you didn't go to church camp doesn't mean you're, <laughs> I mean, like, no. that's just some little stuff that we learned, you know, growing up and stuff, uh, but it's very important because it teaches us how to pray because prayer right. is so important. And the the power of prayer, man, that like you just said, it mm-hmm. is so impactful. It right. is our number one communication with God and the most important thing in our relationship we should mm-hmm. have. And uh, my dad said something I wrote down. I don't think I'll ever forget this. He said, you cannot know the will of God if you're not talking to him daily. Mm. And I've been struggling, dude. Like, I've been like, God, give me answers. I want to know. I, you put something on my heart. Tell me what it is. Let me figure this out. Mm-hmm. I haven't even dove, dove into prayer like I need to to figure this yeah. out. And I, and I want to I wanna talk about that because, you know, Brother Stacy did say, you know, you need to have your time of prayer where you do like isolate yourself and you just specifically pray and some people you know okay me and hud are both people of variety like we just like doing stuff you know like if someone randomly calls us and says hey go do this like well, it, that's fun to us like planning out is like something i've gotten so much better about but we don't do it like all the time so but what i'm saying with that when it comes to prayer you can pray any time of the day you don't have to just pray at three o'clock every single day. Like if you feel led to pray, you can pray. Be in a constant state of prayer. Like Paul was always, always in a constant state of prayer. And at every night when he lay down, he say, Amen. Yeah. Because that's how just connected you need to be. Is right. you're always talking to him. It doesn't just end when you say amen. It's through every day, every mm-hmm. hour, every minute. I mean it's it's very impactful what we need to do with it. And it's our only communication with God, so it should be. Yeah, and you know, speaking on our topic of you know, who are your real friends? How are we supposed to be great friends if we don't pray for our friends? Yeah, like we have to be there for them and pray for them. Like if somebody takes you or calls you and they're like, "Hey, I'm just going through it," dude, pray for them immediately, right there, right on the spot. And I think uh, what we need to get into about the friends is I spoke a little bit on last time Proverbs twenty seven seventeen. Mm-hmm. As iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. You need to figure out who those friends are that are sharpening right. you. Yes. And, like, you need to know the signs of a bad friend. Yeah. Like, and, and you know, I don't want to, like, I'm not going to say, like, you should just cut off everyone. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying know who's in your circle. Like, know who is going to be there for you and who's not. Because I know from experience in high school we grow up with people and we want them to naturally be there for us when sometimes they aren't. Like, whether it's on a team, whether it's, you know, just people you went to elementary with or whatever. But you just have to know at a certain point when you get to our age, you know, we're both 19. Like, I can put on one finger the people I feel like at any point I could call and they'd answer. 
you know, I could maybe put it on two fingers, but I mean, uh, you know what I'm saying, Hood. Yeah, exactly. Those friends that are there and that are really not. And I always struggled with finding those real friends. That's how I kind of got caught up in the stuff I was in, the worldly mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, the the desires of my flesh. I, I looked to those friends that were not necessarily friends, man. Just guys that wanted to have a good time with Well, me. yeah, and if you ever said, like, that you really needed something, I mean, they really just wouldn't be there for you. They'd be there for you to go get something for you to party with them, but they wouldn't yeah, be there exactly. for you. Yeah, like, like, and that's the one of the signs of a bad friend is putting themselves before you when you need them. And, like, they only talk to you, like, when it's convenient to them. Uh, I mean, they just aren't sharpening you, you know? They're, they're not leading you through the path you need to be on. They're mm-hmm. trying to put you on what makes them feel good or their desires. They don't want right. necessarily what's best for you. Just what's best for the moment. Yeah, for the moment. And, and that's the thing too. Okay, let me give you guys a, a, a perfect example. Something I think of as a perfect example. So if you're really going through something and say one of those friends that you've, you know, you've been drinking with or partying with or whatever that you're like, oh, this is my buddy, man. So you send them a long message and you're just like, man, I'm going through it. You're pouring your heart you're out You're pouring your heart out to them and you receive very little effort back in the sense of like, if I text somebody and I'm like, man, I'm going through it, you know, this and that, and they just respond with like, oh yeah, I got you, bro. I hear that. (laughs) I hear that, dog. Like, bro, they do not care about you. I'm sorry. And that's not always the case, but it's when you see it multiple times. Yeah. Like when you see that they only hit you up for that drink. They only hit you up for, you know, to go smoke. They only hit you up when it's convenient to them. You got to stay away from people like that because they just want you for the highs and lows and they're leading you down the wrong path. That good friend and that bad friend can kind of be difficult sometimes, not knowing if they're really in your corner or not. Mm-hmm. But when you put it to test, that's how you figure it out, man. Right. And last night, just like last night, mm-hmm. I was I had these temptations. I was like, man, you know, it'd be nice to go hang out with some of my so-called buddies. Mm-hmm that would get me high or something like that. And I'm like, I don't want to fall into that temptation. You know, I'm going down the right path. I don't know what to do. I call you up. Yeah, and he, well, he called me and he was just like, Caleb, man, I'm having temptations right now, man. I kind of want to go drink or whatever. or Not necessarily drink, but just go kind of have fun. And not the right kind of fun. Yeah, not the right kind of fun. And The sense of fun, that's temporarily. Right. That's when you get home, you're like, Nothing changed. Yeah, nothing, bro, yes, nothing changed. And that's the thing with all of these, you know, worldly things. It's like, yes, but, and, and I want to elaborate that on, on that a little more. I'm not saying you shouldn't have fun, dude. I'm not saying you should shelter yourself and just only read your Bible and do nothing else. God calls us to go out into the world and he wants us to have fun. Yeah. But I'm saying that when you're doing those things that just aren't helping you at all and those friends that aren't helping you at all, and HUD last night, he literally called me and he said, Caleb, can we go do something, bro? Can we go do something? And I'm going to be honest, I didn't want to. I was working <laughs> like I was working on something very important to me and I was about to go to sleep and I was just like, I really don't want to. But you know what I said? I said, all right, if I was in HUD's shoes, would I want me to go and hang out with him right now? And I said, absolutely. I, I just got out of the shower. I was ready to go to bed. And I said, you know what? No, and I got my shoes on. We went and we went to the junior high basketball courts. Tex and Sai showed up, and we played two on two, and it was super fun. Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, and just like that, I was able to call an actual friend and get out of a situation that I didn't need to put myself in. You know, mm-hmm. and when you're trying to find these friends, it took me a while to really open up about everything to Caleb mm-hmm. in general. Is just a good friend. It takes a while to find those friends you can do that to. But pray for those friends. Right. Ask, ask God to put people in your lives that will change it for the better. Not that are just there for the minute that will make you feel good for a little time being. But friends that truly care about you and want to see you grow as a person, you know? Yeah. And just I mean, like, just I like, I'm yeah, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> go like ahead. my dad said, the power of prayer is unbelievable. In for sure. <laughs> you want to, uh, oh my gosh, bro. Dude, you I was tell just about to tell it. You're going to tell the story? <laughs> So we're sitting in church. I got to tell you all this story. We're sitting in church and Caleb's sitting beside me and dad's hitting prayer. And he's like, man, I'm I'm feeling called to pray with this lady beside us. I don't know why. And I was like, <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah. And let me remind you, this lady, lady is hitting 80 or almost 80. And she's just an interesting character, you know. And uh, She's awesome. She's, she's really cool. But 
Caleb's like, I, I feel like I need to go pray. Well, she well she was singing and she was just really into it, and I was just like, you know what, man? I'm sure she would love it if I just said, hey, can I pray with you? So yeah. Go ahead, talk. Yeah. <laughs> and he he, I was like, yeah, man, go for it, go pray with her. He comes back in like five seconds. I'm like, well, that was quick. He's like, yeah, bro. She said no. <laughs> <laughs> Like, no, I went, so I went up to her and I just put my arm around her. I said, hey, uh, can I pray with you? And she just went, nope, uh-uh. <laughs> that is so funny. And, but, but still, think about it. So, you know, whether she said yes or whether she said no, I think that it would mean a lot to her. Like, even if she said no, just the fact that I showed her that I cared about her yeah. means that, like, it probably means a lot to her. I mean, maybe not. Maybe she... I don't know. Maybe she didn't. Yeah. But I'm thinking about it in you know a positive way. Maybe she did see that as a good thing and she, you know, may make her heart happy. No. But think that about this. About you know the good that can come out of that outweighs the bad. Just like for sure. She, she just said no. I yeah. mean That was the worst that could happen. Right. But just imagine if somebody actually did need that prayer. Imagine how impactful that is. Just coming up to somebody, being intentional is way more impactful than just sending a text or anything like that. Yes, bro. Oh, my gosh. And, like, okay, and, and we forget the greatest two commandments sometimes. The greatest two commandments are love God and love people. Like, yeah. bro, love your friends unconditionally. Like, one of the biggest goals in my life is to be known as someone who loves unconditionally. And um, I think, is it okay? Can I dive into the Sherwin story? Yeah, man. Okay, so... Man, so I'm reading this book by Tim Tebow. It's called Shaken. Tim Tebow, uh, a lot of people know Tim Tebow is one of my favorite athletes, mission-driven, love his shirts, love his brand, love everything. So Tim is about 15 years old, and he's in the Philippines. And, you know, in, in the Philippines, you know, when Americans come, that's like the equivalent of Michael Jordan coming to speak at our school or something like that. Yeah. And all these kids, there's thousands of kids from middle school to high school. And Tim, he's 15 years old. He's talking to these kids, and he sees three of them that just randomly go away from the crowd. And, you know, Tim is the type of person that he cares for all people. And he was just thinking in the back of his mind the whole time he's talking. He's like, where are these kids going? Where are these kids going? And so I'm reading the book. I'm pretty interested in it. And I see that, you know, after he talks to some of the kids, he goes and tries to find where these kids are at. So he finds them in a little hut. And there's four of them, you know. And he walks in and he said, hey, why weren't you guys at the um, the assembly thing, you know. He said, I just, you know, I just wanted to, like, meet you guys. And so... He walks in and he sees a little boy on the ground and his feet are on backwards. Yeah. And his name is Sherwin. And so they they said, we just wanted to be with our friend. No one else wanted to. And I was just like, man, that broke my heart. And what broke my heart even more, I was reading and Tim was like, well, you guys could have carried him, you know? And then the little boy looked at him and he said, well, our principal wanted to impress the Americans, and he said, I wasn't very impressive. Man. Dude, that made me want to cry because it was like, this boy is so loved by Jesus. And Tim looked at him, and he said, Sherwin, you are you impress me more than anyone. Like, you, you are so loved by Jesus, and you're so special, and I want you to know that. And, man, that broke my heart when I, like when I heard that. But I started to think, bro, you know, and, and he, he elaborated a little more, and he's like, what would you do? If Michael Jordan was speaking at your school, if you had a buddy, like would a good friend, for? would you be there for them? Would you stand back and would you miss out on that to be there for a friend? And the subtitle of it, like in the chapter, is the best kind of friend. Man, I want to be a friend like that. I want to be somebody that's the best kind of friend. That's That story's impactful, dude. And tell, tell them about the last part you said you read of it. What Sherwin said back to... Tim. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the coolest thing in the world is, you know, I, I don't know if it was in English or if it was in whatever, you know, if the Philippines speak, but Tim said it's whenever Filipino. he... Filipino. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but Tim, you know, he looked at him and he said, hey, um, like uh, Sherman, or Sher Sherman, he said, Sherwin, hey, I got to leave, okay? He said, um, and at that point, you know, all three of those boys were saved. So he knew that, you know, that, you know, they were brothers now. And so he looked at him and he said, Sherwin, I'll see you in heaven. And he looked at him and he said, I'll run with you in heaven, Timmy. That's, man, <laughs> wow. That me yeah, it gave me chills, man. It's just one of the coolest stories in the world. And man, we can be so much better than we are 
Really, when it comes to being a friend, however great you think you are, you can be better. I can be better. HUD can be better. But imagine if I didn't go with HUD last night. Imagine if I wasn't a good friend. And I'm not saying I'm this holier-than-thou friend. That's not what I'm saying. But it's just a little bit of things that we can do that we can be a better friend. Yeah. So, man. Always look out. Being that good friend, you can't expect to find these good friends if you're not a good friend. Right. And, like, it... Okay, so one thing I talked about is, you know, I really wish I would have been in a youth group in high school, you know, because I used to think my identity was in basketball. I used to Mm -hmm. think, I'm a basketball player, man, you know, I gotta go play college basketball, this and that, which I am playing college basketball, and I love it, but I'm not a, I'm not a basketball player, man. I'm a great friend, and I'm a, I'm a brother in Christ to people. My purpose is in Christ, not in me, and that's, that's what I've started thinking, you know, like, who do I want to represent, and you know, and that's, you know, I, I strive, like I said, to be a great friend. And I don't know if it's a good or a bad trait of mine, but uh, like, you know, if we get into an argument or something and you come up to me and you're just like, Caleb, I want to talk. I'm going to talk to you every time because I, that's just who I am. That's, you know, I, I strive to, to love at all times. Fro- Proverbs seventeen seventeen says a friend loves at all times. Yeah, dude. and that's that is a hard thing to do, especially with some of the circumstances in people's lives. Where I got some friends that have been hurt so many times, it's hard for them to just love again. Right, right, bro. And it's hard for them to just open up about whatever they need to talk about when they've already been stabbed in the back or anything like that. But you got to remember, when God looks at you at all the sin you've had. He still loves you unconditionally. For sure, man. I mean, we can always uh, forgive. And, you know, my stepdad, when I was younger, my stepdad always said the same prayer with me. He said, um, Lord, please forgive my sins as I forgive those who sin against me. Yeah. And what that means is like, you know, Lord, forgive me while I'm also forgiving those who have sinned against me. And like, bro, we can always forgive people no matter what happens. You can forgive people. You can be a great friend. And that actually brings me into our tips. We have some tips for being a great friend. And we're going to talk about the first one. The first one is if they need you, call them. Don't text them. Talk about that for Matt Hood. You know, I said it earlier when he went up to pray with Miss Zelda, it was intentional. You mm-hmm. know, he didn't send a text from across the room like, hey, I was thinking about you. Which, yeah, can which I come is, pray with you? <laughs> which is a great thing to do. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, when you go up to somebody and you look them right in their eyes, Say, I'd like to pray with you. Man, mm. that, that touches you more it's than anything. different, any, bro. That touches you more than anything. And that can always be an impactful thing for anybody's life. Just that hand of touching your shoulder ever saying, <laughs> I really do care about you. You know? <laughs> that shoulder touch. <laughs> that shoulder touch. Don't get yeah. me wrong. But yeah. it's always different than just, you know, I was thinking yeah. about you the other day. It's and, different. Yeah, and number two that uh, I'm going to elaborate on a little bit is, number two, pray for them and mean it. Like, whenever you pray for somebody, like I said, you know, you need to have your time of the day when you pray. But one thing my grandma does that I really look up to her for, she has a list of people she prays for. Yeah. That's crazy, bro. It could be, and I don't know how long it could be. It could be 100 people. It could be 1,000. It could be 50. No, But no matter what, she's literally intentionally praying for people. She told me she prays for me every day. That's crazy to me, bro. She literally specifically says, Lord, I pray for Caleb. I pray Caleb does this. I pray Caleb does that. I pray that he's okay. That's crazy, bro. And knowing That's somebody awesome. prays for you touches you in a way for sure that nothing else can. It's like, wow, you do care about me. Right. Because you go to the holiest of holies to talk about me. Mm-hmm. Not just putting yourself first, putting other people. Yeah, and and that, that brings it back to me, you know, with this. When you're around your friends, you know, if you have your circle – which, which I always say, my circle. I, I think my circle is probably like five or six people, you know, maybe a little more. But when I say your circle, I mean your people that you just trust more than anything in the world. And I know some of you are probably thinking, well, I don't, you know, it's hard for me to trust people. Well, you have to find people you can trust because it's not healthy to hold things in. You gotta break be, that. Be vulnerable and be real around your friends. How are you supposed to grow if you're not real? Right. And 
I have to give a shout out to my mom. She got mad at me last time because I hyped up my dad. I didn't bring her in. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got to give a shout out to my mama. I love my mama. Mm-hmm. And uh, she always is a great influence to be real with, you know. Right. Yeah, I mean, I can get personal. I can get deep with her. And look to your parents. I mean, sometimes you, you look at your parents, you're like, you know, I just don't think I could trust them with them. Yes, you can. You can go to your parents with anything, and they're going to love you. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. Just like your big daddy in heaven. Right. Your parents are going to look. Yes, sir. And, and I, uh, I want to talk a little bit about, so, you know, okay, by the way, shout out to FCA camp. We I love FCA camp. This summer, any of you that are in high school, I want you at this camp. June 10th through the 13th is the high school camp. And I think maybe the 7th through the 10th is the junior high camp. Yeah, so we grab a four. Right, right. But anyways, what I'm, what I'm talking about with FCA is when it comes to being vulnerable and being real around people, the reason I love FCA so much is because you get in huddles. So your huddles you have, it's an, it's like seven or eight guys and then seven or eight girls. Like you have different huddles. Uh, but it, it's, uh, what would you call it? like separated I guess you know with a boy huddle and a girl huddle and there's multiple but the thing is what we're like what I'm getting at is you can talk to your guy friends about certain things you can't talk to about your girlfriends yeah like like or with your girlfriends and that goes for girls you know girls like okay typically girls probably deal with different things than guys do. Of course. So how are you supposed to relate and be vulnerable if you talk to a guy about that? Which if you're in a relationship, I 100% think that you should be vulnerable around your girlfriend or your boyfriend. Because if you're pursuing marriage with that, then you got to. I mean, but what I'm saying is like when it comes to your friends, guys and girls and girls and guys, it's different. Yeah. Be vulnerable. As guys, we're going to be vulnerable around or guy friends as girls you need to be vulnerable around your girlfriends you don't have to tell your random friend like you can go ahead and some people uh i've seen so many relationships where they just cling on to each other which is a great thing especially if you're looking to pursue marriage but when you're in high school and starting college you need to have those guy friends and those girlfriends for each other Mm because You're dealing with these hormones and growing up, you need those friends yes, you can relate dude. to more than just talking to that one girl or that one guy yes. about it. And what he's saying is not that you don't need to open up to your relationship. You need to have that and somebody else. Yes, that they can understand you from a different perspective. Because a girl looking at your guy problems, you, let's say you're struggling with pornography, mm-hmm. it's way better to talk about yes, your struggles with that with another guy than it is... To try to talk about the girl because yeah. they just don't really understand well, Yeah, that they don't anyway. understand that because we're different. And as far as a girl goes, you know, man, it makes me so sad. I see so many girls I know that tell me personally, Caleb, I deal with insecurity. And I'm going to be there for them and I'm going to talk to them. But if you know another girl that deals with insecurity or deals with whatever... That's who you can relate to and you can help each other with. Like you can help each other and you can talk to each other. So when it comes to very, very personal things like we're talking about, if you have another girl, if you're a girl and that's, you know, something you struggle with, if you talk to another girl about that, that like that's so awesome. Yeah. Like you can connect and you can talk about it. You can talk about how to get better. By the way, I just want to say if you are a girl and you struggle with insecurity, you're beautiful. Please stop thinking anything else. And I'm not, I know, I'm just putting that out there. God made you specifically. He made you for a reason. He made you exactly the way he wants you. He made you so beautifully, so amazing. You're beautiful. Quit thinking anything else. Amen, dude. I like that. Yes, sir. And now, you know, okay, I I, want to talk about the Jenny Allen story that we're going to use. Okay, so Jenny Allen is the author of uh, Get Out of Your Head. It's a book that I read uh, you know, someone got it for me for Christmas, you know, someone great, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, um, anyways, so in this book, Jenny talks about getting the 2% out, get the 2% out. And what I mean by that is we get around our friends. And like I said, we get vulnerable. We aren't nine, like we're 98% with them. What yeah. that means is we tell 98% of what's wrong with us. We don't put out that 2%. So there's a story, and gosh, I'm talking way too much. I need to let Hud talk more. You're sorry. Good, <laughs> so, like so there's a there's a story about you know uh, Jenny. She had a accountability group with women, and for so long there was this one woman that was lusting over another man, and she it was eating her up. 
you know, she loved her husband more than anything, but for some reason she was lusting over another man. And at one point she started texting him and she knew it was wrong and she had been holding it in for days and she finally just blurted it out to her group, the the group, like the accountability group with women. And she was just like, I've been texting another man. I I feel so bad. She started crying, but she got the 2% out. Yeah. She talked to them about it. And she got better. She never talked to that guy one more time after that. And she never even thought about him. And I think eventually she told her husband, and yes, that's not a good thing. Like, gosh, you should never have that in a marriage. But she talked about it and got better about it because she got the 2% out. So with your, when you're with your friends, be vulnerable. Get the 2% out. And holding that stuff in will just slowly eat you over time to the Ugh. point where it just kills you. Yes. And it is so much better when you finally say, look... This is what I'm struggling with for real. Mm -hmm. And they can actually connect with you. That real friend can say, listen, this is what you need to do. First, we need to pray about it. Mm -hmm. And if they say that, that's a good friend because they got their their head right. Mm -hmm. They got their priorities right. And that's that's what you need to look for. And those friends that are succeeding and being the best they can be, you got to hype them up. Bro, hype them up for real, dog. (laughs) You got to gas them up, bro. Bro. I mean, you got to say... Listen, man, I'm proud of you. You're doing great in life. I like the way you're pointing yourself in the direction and (laughs) you're moving towards God. You're moving towards your life goals. It's awesome. Well, and, you know, when you hype somebody up, and I love using that, ah, hype, rah. Like, I just love saying that. When you hype someone up, it encourages them and lets them know they're on the right path. So, like, even just something simple, bro. Like, if I get a 100 on a test... And HUD looks at me, and he daps me up, and he's like, bro. He's like, hey, he's like bro. Oh. Ugh, like, hey, you know, you, you can do this, bro. You can do it. It gives you confidence, and, you know, it helps knowing that you have people in your corner. It's it, always a great thing to have those people that are, like, 100% in your corner. Mm-hmm. And that are like, dude, I'm proud of you. Your family's proud of you. Most importantly, God's proud of you right now. For sure. And when you literally hear from another friend, when another friend is like, you know, even like if it's relationally, like when a friend looks at you and they're like, man, you're doing really good in your relationship with God right now. Or like, I, I've noticed how you're praying more. I've noticed how this and that. I've noticed. I've noticed. When a friend says, I've noticed, those things you're doing alone come to light. Yes. And that yes, hits bro. you And that hits you in your relationship. You're like, I can keep doing this. Mm-hmm. I can keep going. I can be the best I can be. Yeah. And, and while, you know, while we shouldn't, I don't know. I don't know how to say this. While you shouldn't look for people's approval or whatever, when you know that you're like with your friends and they're encouraging you and they're saying like, "Hey, man, you're the, you're doing the right thing." Like that does give you confidence and that does kind of reassure you, I guess, that you're doing the right thing. And you know that. Okay, that brings me back to rule number five. Ask friends how they are randomly. Just check on them. Yeah. Like out of nowhere. Like, just call every once in a while and just be like, hey, how are you doing? And oh my gosh, please listen up. When somebody gives that, oh, I'm good. Like, be like, no, dog. How are you for real? Yeah. Dive into it. Get deep with them. Be vulnerable. Yeah. Well, I mean, so many people are like, oh, I'm fine. Yeah. And 90% of the time, they're not. Yeah, exactly. Um, And when they're checking in on you, be that vulnerable person that's like, you know, I'm struggling with this. How can you help me? Or how can I help you? Mm-hmm. And that's such a great thing to do because sometimes I'll just text a buddy and be like, man, what's going on, dude? And they'll be like, you know, I really appreciate you checking in on me. And that's how you know you're doing the right thing is when somebody appreciates you as a person and they're like, you know, he has something. Mm -hmm. He has something that's motivating him to be like that. Right. That's God, dude. That's God pushing you to be the person you are to lift them up while also lifting God up. Yeah. And, bro, there have been times, and, you know, I don't want to sound weird, but, like, there are times... That, you know, I talk about just going for what God puts on your heart. Like, when God puts something on your heart, you go for it and you don't think about it. There have been times that I've just been on my phone or I've been doing something and God will put it on my heart. Like, okay, you know, I'm going to shout out Wes Lang, my boy Wes. You know, hadn't talked to Wes in a while. Uh, Wes is a junior at Batesville, stud athlete. You know, he's just, he's a great guy. So, uh, but I text Wes, or or yeah, I text him and I just said, hey man, can I call you sometime soon? He said, yeah, I'm in baseball practice. Uh, you know, we can call after. So he called me. I just started talking to him. I was like, man, how are you? How are you doing for real? And, you know, he just started talking to me and stuff. And 
I, you know, I mean, he, he said he was great and we had a great conversation and stuff. But I'm saying that like sometimes I just feel led to just ask someone how they are. Because sometimes when God puts it on your heart, hey, I need you to text him. Hey, I need you to call him. And then you know it's powerful when someone is like, you know, man, I actually have been going through it. And then you just like, you know, they just. And God puts that on your heart to do that. And yeah. And then you feel that sense of uh, satisfaction knowing that you did the right thing. Mm-hmm. But when you're helping somebody, make sure you're a good listener. Yes, bro. Listen to them when they need you. Sometimes not everybody needs an answer, but it's a shoulder to cry on. Well, they just need someone to rant to. Yeah. And I totally get that. And <laughs> I got a lot of stories about that. But um, <laughs> sometimes it's just the best to be a person that's like, you know, I'm here for you. I'm mm-hmm. here. Let's go get ice cream, you know? Yeah, let's get some ice cream, man. You know, just be that person that somebody wants to call. Hey, from for all my boys out there, girls love them some ice cream. So get you. Hey, there you go. There's some tip from the man himself, the ladies' man. All <laughs> I'm right? definitely not a ladies' man. <laughs> but just be that good listener, you know? Be that one that cares. Yeah, just 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 care, man. Honestly, like just just care, like that's that's really what a good friend is. Like I said, Proverbs seventeen seventeen. A friend loves at all times. All times. And we're gonna wrap up with that, man. Remember that verse, Proverbs seventeen seventeen. A friend loves at all times. Go be and a lover. Proverbs seventeen twenty seven seventeen. Iron sharpens iron. As one man sharpens another. Look who's sharpening you, all right? Yes, sir. Love you guys. Yes, sir. Love you guys. All right, we're going to end with some prayer. Uh, I'm going to say the prayer, and then we're just going to close out. Father God, thank you so much for this awesome, amazing day. Um, I love you so much, and I pray that you help us just to love. Help us to be lovers, you know, with our friends, uh, with our, you know, in our relationships. You know, if somebody's listening and they have a spouse, you know, whoever, whatever it is, you know, each day, we are working to be better friends. We're working to be uh, better lovers. We're, we're working to be better in everything, Lord. Help us to love unconditionally. Unconditionally means without conditions. It means without limits. You know, I pray each day you help me to be an unconditional lover, somebody that loves, you know, whether relationally, you know, in a friendship, uh, whatever it is with my family, whatever it is, help me to be an unconditional lover, someone without limits. Help HUD to be an unconditional lover. Help yes. the people listening right now to be unconditional. And I've used that word a lot, but it's such an amazing word because it describes the love that God has for us. You know, No matter what we do, we will never be able to outrun that amazing love that you have gave to us, Father. And I thank you so much for this day. I thank you so much for the people listening. And we are praying for them right now, Lord. We're praying for them. We just pray that you help us to love unconditionally, Lord. I love you so much. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, man. All right. Hey, by the way, like I said, you guys, uh, give us any questions you have. uh, Answer the DMs. You know, we're always answering the DMs. uh, You know, just trying to um, just help anyone in their call or their relationship with God. You know, whatever it is, just um, don't be afraid to to hit us up, man. Don't be afraid. Uh, We're always looking to just uh, help people out. Help people out. So we're always there to listen. Peace out, guys. Yes, sir. See you guys.